What's going on guys? Today we're going to have a very, very important conversation. The title of this video, if you think like an employee, you are absolutely doomed as a business owner. And this comes from some of the recent comments that I've gotten that these people are not situated to be successful business owners. Now, here's one of the things. Did I ever think like an employee? Yes, I did. And that was the old me. That was years and years ago. Um, I would say at when I was doing the consulting stuff, I had one, two, three, four employees making $50,000 a year. And that's one of the struggles you have as an employer, finding people to do the job correctly. Because this is one of the things that happened to me. Uh, I was looking for a salesperson and I put up an ad on Indeed and part of this is my controversy I, I didn't really put a good ad up and this is why I got the results that I got um, <clears throat> person after person who applied for this job had no <clears throat> information on their resume that they could do the job and I realized it's like okay this is a problem so what I did is I canceled my membership with Indeed I canceled the ads and I did not interview one person and this is one of the things that irked me. I had several people who realized that I canceled the appointment and they emailed me and they were like, hey, are we going to have this appointment? Because it was a pretty good job. And um, I think I put the salary. It was like 50, 50 to 75,000. And I had all of these people who could not do the job. I just knew they couldn't do the job. And to even go a little deeper in the can, hiring people is a skill set. Hiring the correct people is a challenge. Hiring people is an incredibly important thing. It's an incredibly stabilizing thing. But one of the problems that I see and this is coming from the comments because once again, revamping the channel, revamping the content, revamping the business, revamping everything. I still have some people who are here who don't want to start a business. And we've had this conversation before. You don't want to start a business. That's cool. It's your life. Do what you want. But why are you here? And these people want to comment and leave these passive aggressive comments talking about not making money, not building anything, and they just won't leave. What I want you to do is to sit back and to think, what would your life look like if you were living exactly how you wanted to live? I want you to think if you were living in the house that you wanted to live in, you were driving the car that you wanted to live in, you were married or in a relationship with the person that you wanted to be in, in a relationship with. I'm here to tell you that's all powerful. That's all possible. The power of persistence, a bold guide to achieving your goals, will help you get there. But that's not all I have for you. What I want you to do is to go ahead and get yourself involved in the Corporate Citizen Playbook training. I have a goal to create 50,000 corporate citizens. What is a corporate citizen? A person who has an income of $250,000. That in the United States of America makes you rich. That's the beginning. And this is what this whole curriculum is designed to help you get there. First of all, teach you everything that you need to know about setting up a corporate relations, setting up the structure, the LLC, the holding companies, the operating companies, teach you how to get six figure business lines of credit, teach you how to set up a company, teach you how to set up an operating company, teach you all of these things that you currently don't know. So here is where this even gets better. 
First of all, right now I am building out the Corporate Citizen Playbook training. It's going to take me some time because it's going to be a pretty large course. During that phase when I'm building it out, you can get in at an extreme discount. And whether you go ahead and do the one and done or do the payment plan, you lock yourself in to get all of the training that is coming. Next month, we're going to be talking about how to make money, how to make a lot of money with a small YouTube channel. That's going to be probably July. And if you go ahead and lock in today, where you would go below, watch the video, you would get into the description, or it would be in the comments section, where you can go ahead and do a one and done, or do the payment plan, and use the promo code JUMP, J-U-M-P, to get this extreme discount that's gonna lock you in to all of the training that's about to go down in 2023. So once again, go below the video, it'll be in the description, or in the comment section where you can go ahead and get in on this new training. I don't know why they won't leave, but they just won't. And I just see these things and I see a ton of employee thinking. And employee thinking is very, very bad for you if you own the business. Because employee thinking is, how can I get the most for the least? How can I get the most pay for the least amount of work? How can I get the best vacation package? I mean, I've literally had this conversation with people that I had just hired. They had been working for me, not one, not two, not three, but four weeks. And we had the conversation about vacation. They had been working for me four weeks and they wanted to take a vacation after four weeks and get paid for it. Let me go ahead and go back to the dinosaur days when we got jobs. We had to get a job. We knew inherently that we were not taking vacation for a year. And we knew that we weren't gonna get paid for about three weeks because we we're gonna have two weeks in the hole. Everyone who got a job back in the day went through this whole process. Now we have I think McDonald's does daily pay. I think Uber does daily pay. And you've got situations where people who are employees do not understand the bandwidth of the business owner. Once again, I don't expect an employee to be really caring about the guy who employs them, but in hindsight, they should. Because let's say you're driving down the street, right? And to your right, you see that this business is having a massive going out of business sale. And you go in there and you scoop up some goods and stuff. And I can tell you, not once did it enter your mind that the reason they were going out of business was the business owner was suffering. Didn't enter your mind. You didn't even care. He didn't even think about it, didn't even care that because you got this good deal on your stuff that someone was going to lose their business, someone was going to lose their payroll, someone was going to lose their way to earn money. Didn't even occur to you. And this is one of the things that happens if there's a deal on the day on the table, if there's a way to get a good offer, hey, I am with it, I'm 100%, I don't care what happens. And I'm just telling you that the average person with employee thinking, employee mindset, does not care what happens to the owner. Now, let's go ahead and flip this. How many articles can you find about employees feeling disrespected by their owners? Just ultimate, they're literally everywhere. There's a guy, I believe his name is Joshua Fluke, who has a YouTube channel that is rooted in employee freedom, employee benefits, remote work, and not once has he ever done a video talking about the care and considerations of the business owner. So I got a question. The employees say the business owners don't care about them, right? It's rooted, it's on blogs, it's on YouTube, it's everywhere. Question, how many of y'all care about the business owner? 
Serious question. Put that in the cup. How many of you actually give a damn about the business owner? Because I'm going to be 100% frank. You don't. You simply don't. The average employee could think less of the person who employs them. All they want are their hours in their check. This is how the average person thinks. But to even consider, to even think that the business owner ain't really thinking about the employees. Let me tell you something, as a business owner, you care a great deal about your employees. You're always thinking about your employees. You're thinking about health insurance, um, you know, to set up a 401k, right? Which should be customary and ordinary. That could cost a business 100k just to set it up. Just to set it up and then to add even more money to it, this whittles your profit line. And a lot of businesses do it because it's a good policy. But I'm just saying that when you as a common person are deeply rooted, and I'm gonna give you a good example of how this type of thinking is not in your best interest. Years and years ago, I used to watch Donald Trump's show, The Apprentice. And there was this one task that they had to do. And it was this young black woman and then the other apprentice contestants. And she started talking about doing things for the community. This woman was 100% thinking like an employee about the community, doing the benefits and all this other stuff. And ultimately, she did not get her task done. Ultimately, she got booted off the show. And, you know, I'm not saying disregard your employees or mistreat them. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, as the business owner, you have to have a different paradigm. You have to have a different approach. You have to come at it a different way. You have to think about it much differently because give you an example years ago when i was employed my last job was the perfect entry point to starting a business why do i say that because in my last job if i didn't make sales i didn't get paid business if i don't make sales i don't get paid same thing so it was the perfect entry point into the world and I wanted to take a vacation and I didn't have any PTO, vacation days, days off, I had none of that. So I had to sit down and it's like, okay, I want to take a vacation. So I went ahead, booked a trip to Hawaii for me and my girl. And what I did before I went on that vacation, I was normally working about 50 hours a week. I took it up to 90 for about six weeks before I went on the vacation, I was working 90 hours a week. I was trying to cram as many deals as I could into my pipeline. I was just working like a maniac. And while I was on vacation, guess what? I took work calls and I did some work stuff because I knew that I didn't have vacation time. I knew that I wasn't going to get paid for the time that I was not in the office. I knew this. so. Well, I was on vacation about two weeks and I would say I managed work calls about 15 hours out of those two weeks. So we're talking about an hour a day. No biggie. My girl, she was asleep while I was doing these calls and stuff. And it felt like a vacation. The beach felt real. And I took an hour out of my day to manage some stuff. And when I got back from my vacation, there was not one, there was not two but three checks on my desk that totaled up to $75,000 that I made while I was on my vacation because I did the pre-work because I wasn't thinking like an employee. I was thinking like a business owner. And I, I'm like, I'm just trying to get this through to you guys. Many of you are so rooted in your employee mindset that you don't even know it. You don't even realize it. And this employee mindset is one of the worst things that you can have as you step on the path to business ownership. 
And I know that many of you will think that, hey, I want to create a business that's fun and ethical and a place that my friends and buddies want to work. And you're, you're walking on a dangerous path. You're walking on a really, really dangerous path. Because if you go ahead and create this business and create this situation, it's just not going to work out well for you. It's just not going to work out well for you. And one of the things that I have always done is I have kept somewhat of a barrier between me and my employees. Um, I had some employees who became friends after we stopped working together. But typically, I've always been really professional. Uh, I've never pushed up on it, a female employee. There was always, and actually I had an employee, had, like, there's this, there's kind of like this wall between you and us. It's like, and I said, exactly, because you're my employees. You're not my buddies. You're not my friends. And I want you, and I thank you. I really applaud you for noticing there is a wall between us because I am the owner of this business. I employ you and I want you to act in a certain way. And I'm about to say something that's going to sound a little flippant. If I ever had to fire you because there's this wall, it would be just like that. I would fire you, you would be gone, and I wouldn't think twice about it. And this is, you know, she looked at me, she said, really? I was like, I got a question. And we had a really interesting question. I said, how often do you think about me and my welfare? And she said, I don't. I was like, okay. So how often do you think about me being healthy, doing well? She said, never. And I said, how often do you think about me running this business and doing certain things and, and uh, we got really personal and she's like i don't think about that so but right now you want me to have those thoughts patterns about you working here and she took she was white and she turned red and she said i never thought about it like that and i didn't even have this language and i was like because that, <clears throat> that's how you're thinking that's the way that you're thinking and um it was a really productive conversation. And this, this is something that's funny. Uh, many, many years after she stopped working for me, she started her own business. And I got an email from her and I got a phone call and she said, I understand why you had the wall now. She said, I started a business and I hired some of my friends. And because of the friendship, I had a friend who was not doing her job really well. She needed to go. But because of her friendship, because there was no wall, she stayed way too long, cost us too much money, and I, I finally had to get rid of her. And going forward, I'm going to, you know, she she literally, she said, I had to get rid of all of my friends because that that friendly, you know, we should be working. They want to sit down, drink mimosas and stuff. She said it was just terrible, terrible idea. But she says, I understand more importantly I acknowledge what you as a business owner went through with your employees. And she's like, oh my God, I had no clue to the mess ups and the game playing and all this stuff that would happen because she was totally clueless. She thought she'd hire her best friends. They would all work together. But here's the thing. When you hire people from a friendship perspective, nine times out of 10, they're going to take advantage of you. Uh, when I was in the military, I had a few NCOs. We were cool. But once the uniform came on, he was an NCO. He was in charge of me. I treated him with the utmost respect. And um, I had one tell me, it's like, you know, you can't have these kind of relationships with most troops because when you are the NCO, you need to be the NCO. And this is one of the reasons that you will see a lot of NCOs. A lot, they just don't mess with the common troops because you have to be in charge. You have to lead. You have to pave the way. And so many people just do not get that. And I'm just here to tell you, as a business owner, if you're thinking like an employee, you're thinking. Right now, there are a number of people on YouTube who are advertising how to build business credit. If you go ahead and enroll in the Money Mindset Program, which teaches you how to manage your money for free, you will learn how to build business credit for free. Do you understand 
that you can go out, set up a new LLC, get an EIN, so the business checking account, and go to a number of credit card issuers and banks and build yourself a hundred to $150,000 worth of business credit within 90 days. I got it all in this course. I teach you how to do it step by step. So go ahead and get the Money Mindset Program today. The links is going to be in the video description and they will often be in the comments. So either way you can find it. And once again, this course is 100% free. It's fast, it's easy, it's quick to the point, and it's things that you need to do to go ahead and learn how to manage your money. I feel that money management is a critical component to success. And this is why I am giving you this course. There's no charge. I'm not charging you today. I'm not going to charge you tomorrow. There will be no fee. You can go ahead, enroll in this money management course, and start learning the tools that you need to be financially literate to get your personal credit, get your credit, cre your credit card credit, and all this other stuff straight where you can be a financially sufficient and on point person. Go ahead and enroll today. Once again, the enrollment is free. It's going to be in the video description or it'll be in one of the comments. So my name is Glendon Cameron and I will see you guys in the next one. It's just not going to be a good look. It's just not going to be a good situation because, and once again, this is not a reason to abuse your employees or to take advantage of your employees. That's not what I'm saying. I feel as a business owner, there needs to be this wall and it needs to be an acknowledged wall. Your employees need to know that, hey, I'm the employer, you're the employee, I'm in charge of you. And that that's a whole nother ball of wax. I have seen so many people with what I consider a low wage job that absolutely hate being told what to do. It's like, this is why I need to be my employee. This is one of the reasons I think the gig economy is flourishing because you can be an Uber driver, you can be a DoorDash deliverer, you can work for Instacart and you can show up to work when you want to and you can leave when you want to. And I think those two factors is the reason that so many people are there. And this is what's funny. I was always, and this is something, I forget who said it. He said, usually a dope ass follower will become a dope ass leader. And I worked for many people. I've had many um, mentors. I had many professionals over me that I respected deeply and I never questioned them. I worked really hard to do the things I needed to do for them. And once again, uh, I've never had employee problem, except for that last business, that, that consulting business. That was wild. That was wild. And But going back to the upscale garage sale, I, I never had an employee problem. Never. Once I had this thing, uh, I did have to fire someone who was like messing around because she was supposed to be listing stuff on eBay and she was out in the street playing. So we did have to get rid of her and she threw my partner under the bus and my partner was, guess what, a little too friendly with her and she got thrown under the bus like you <laughs> thrown under the bus. And my partner was like, I'm, n I'm never going to do that again. And my partner, she never did that again. She. At that point, she developed her wall. She developed the authoritative stance because uh, I never went around talking about we're like family. I, I didn't believe in that. I would never tell an employee that we're like family. But one of the things that you guys have to understand as a business owner, you have a different position. You have a different situation. You have a different perspective when you're building out these businesses and when you're creating this narrative and this thing cannot be replaced, it cannot be altered, it cannot be changed. And if you want a successful business, you've got to think like a business owner.
which is the things that I need to do to make this business better, more successful. You need to be, there, there's so much you have to think about. And like I'm saying, thinking like an employee is a disaster. It's just a disaster. All right. So we're at the point where you want to be a business owner, right? I got just a thing for you. It's called a corporate citizen playbook. I want you to think right now you have a job and you may have a job you like, you may not have a job you don't like, but more than likely the money will never be what you want it to be. By joining the corporate citizen playbook, we can change that. I'm going to teach you how to set up a holding company. I'm going to teach you how to set up operating companies. I'm going to teach you how to set up a sales process. I'm going to teach you how to hire people. I'm going to teach you how to get your business started, whatever that may be. I'm going to teach you so much. And here's the thing that is so great about the corporate citizen playbook. If you get in now, right now, you will get everything that I'm going to do the rest of the year for a really low price. Use promo code JUMP, J-U-M-P. And this is going to get you into the corporate citizen playbook. It's going to set you up for so much. And it's in the description along with the promo code or it's going to be in the description box. So this is one of the things that you can do to facilitate your growth as a business owner, as the man or the woman who's riding that horse, who's leading that business, who's making that money, who's being the head of the organization. So that's right there below for you. Go ahead and get it. My name is Glendon Cameron, and I will see you in the next video.